Welcome back. I'm just Shannon Lovin, your friendly librarian, and I'm back with some book love. So let's chat. Um, so I always like to start it off so you can see like this is kind of what it looks like. And then I'll take a minute here to um, clean it out and organize it a little bit. But I've got like the stack of some books that I want to talk to you about. I think these are the book hauls, if I'm not mistaken. And again, I don't know how, but somehow I've accumulated more books for the shelves. Um, and then that's what this is too. And then I think these are maybe like my book club stack where I'm trying to get myself organized for the year because I did have um, the organizational book club meeting, hmm, August? Yeah, at the very beginning of August, if I'm not mistaken, and then I immediately flew to Florida, and then there's that. So I had a lot of big plans. I wanted to do a before and after book club video, but that didn't happen. Um, but hoping, hoping that I'm gonna get some of those things in there. And then um, also in the last video, I talked to you about a book, um, Devil in the White City. Is that the one? Yes, Devil in the White City, I believe by Eric Larson. I'll double check that. Um, but it was talking about the World's Fair and this um, serial killer who masked himself through um, the World's Fair. He was able to work alongside all of that. And he did this series of serial killings where he was preying on these young women who were coming to Chicago um, during the 1800 and something World Fair. And he was able just to pluck them off without people being able to notice because it took so long for information to get back to their families that they hadn't heard from them in so long. Um, and I said, you know what? I actually was at the 1982 World's Fair. Um, and then I was like, ooh, I actually have a shirt. And I'm kind of out of book themed shirts to wear for the book club chat. So here it is. Here is that 1982 World's Fair shirt. Um, I bought this at a thrift store. I didn't actually buy it when I was, I don't even know how old in 1982, 10, I think. Um, I didn't buy it there. I might have purchased a shirt there. I don't know, but I bought this one like at a thrift store. It's even got a little bedazzling on it. I don't know if you can see that or not, a little bedazzling. Um, and it's uh, one of those jersey shirts, but it is definitely um, authentic because I believe it says Velvachine on the tag or something like that. And I also had to cut the neck because this thing was so <laughs> unnaturally tight. So I was like, okay, that's not gonna work. I don't know, I haven't worn this shirt for a long time. It's a little tight for me. Um, so I don't know, I'm gonna have to change into a looser t-shirt here in a little bit because as I talk to you about books, I know it gets a little crazy, um, but I get really into it and uh, it gets a little heated up in here, so I have to turn the air down low a little bit, and I got fans going. Um, but I don't know, this might be a little bit hot for our whole four hour conversation of books that I try and get down to under an hour for you, and that never works. So, welcome back, I hope. Um, or if you're new and all of that is like, what is she talking about? Uh, watch the last video whenever I book chat for you, Devil in the White City. So I don't know why Stella's barking. I think she just noticed that there's a um, box truck parked in our driveway that has been there for the last 24 hours. I think that's probably why she's upset, but uh, I'm sure you'll hear Stella from time to time. Uh, she likes to bark right now. She has the allergies that I think everybody's dog is going through. And even with medication, she is still scratching. Um, so got any hints for me there? I'd love to hear it. I'm looking to make sure that's what it is. Also, if you've been with me for, you know, a while, quite a while, I'm always talking about being on my back deck and even this library, it looks out onto the back field. Oh yeah, the neighbor is out mowing his lawn. But it looks out onto like our backyard and then there's a back field of like three or four more plots of land that no one has built on and they built. So my summer was not this nice, serene, on my porch, nobody's ever home, I don't have to hear anybody. It was mainly construction. But luckily they built like over, like on the road, but they purchased the whole property there behind them and they've graded it down and now it's all fenced in and they have two dogs. So Stella now has doggy neighbors um, that she is constantly talking to. So give me a minute, I'll get this all cleared off so that we have a better view and we'll talk about what we are kicking off our Friday evening with. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, I do have my drink started. It is Friday evening. Uh, if you are new here, or if you're returning and you need a reminder, I teach high school, mainly high school freshmen. I have a class of general seniors. I have some sophomores mixed in. I actually even have a junior this year, so I have like all four grades, so there's that. Um, but that means sometimes at the end of the week, 
I'm a little tired. Um, but man, all week long, I have been looking forward to coming home and talking to you. I've been planning to do this um, because you also know if you've been following me for the last little bit um, that I always say I'm going to do these more frequently. I'm going to make them shorter. I'm going to do breakout videos. And I do have all those plans. I promise you I have all those plans. I am super excited about it. Um, I'm just always constantly surprised at life <laughs> and how quickly like things have to happen every week. I have to feed my family. I have to clean my house. I have to go to work. I have to grade papers. It's a lot. <laughs> um, and I do this for fun. So I still plan to do all those things, make shorter videos, make them more frequently, um, and do those breakout ones that I really, really want to do. But it is what it is. So I am so glad to be with you this evening on this Friday evening. I have been looking forward to it all week long. Um, I've had some great reads once again, which is why I want to do these videos to start with, to give you some ideas. Um, as well as some other little tidbits that I want to throw in there. And that does usually start with our drink. So look, this one's even pretty. It's like a little pink drink, not Starbucks, but you know, Starbucks, if you want to sponsor me, I will drink your pink drink here on camera. I will. And I will tell everybody how much I love it because I do. Um, but today's pink drink is actually from this can. I don't remember where I got these from, but it's called Neon Zebra. You know what? I may have already talked to you about these. It's a good thing I keep good notes. I'll check on that. But this is called Neon Zebra, and you basically mix this can. It's pretty small, right? 7.5 fluid ounces. You mix this with rum. I mixed it with Malibu rum because that's what we keep on hand here. Um, and then I poured it over ice, and it's delightful. It's the wonderful little Friday drink while I'm talking to you about all these wonderful book suggestions that I have for you. That is delicious. <laughs> um, all right, so here are some of the books that I want to talk to you about. Um, before I just sat them down off of here, I wanted to go ahead and just show them to you. We have obviously a lot of Agatha. A lot of Agatha, I will continue to talking to you about Agatha every time we meet. Um, this is Agatha Christie's The Mysterious Mr. Quinn. Look at that cover, it's delightful. Um, I also have The Paper Caper by Kate Carlisle, another breakout book that I told you about. I also really apologize that my nails are terrible right now. Welcome back to school. <laughs> um, I got my toes done, but not my fingers, and that needs to happen. But maybe next time, something to look forward to. I will paint them black for Halloween. Uh, but Kate Carlisle's The Paper Caper. Um, remember, I am one of Kate's raters, which means she does send me the books uh, for free when they are published in her two series, Bibliophile and the Fixer Upper Mystery series. Um, and she does that in exchange for a very fair review, very honest review, where I review her books like in three or four different places online. I always like to do the, the videos. Um, and she's an author that it's easy to do that because I always love her books. Um, and that one was just released this summer. I have Murder in the Locked Library by Ellery Adams. This is another cozy. So um, Paper Caper is cozy. I would not call Agatha cozy. But Ellery Adams is another cozy um, that I was a little bit interested in reading for the first time Ellery Adams and not really thinking it's super cozy. So interested to know what you think. Also interested to know if you hear any difference in the sound quality because I put pillows all over the um, tile floor in here in the library. And remember like, I, I don't say remember, I don't know that I've ever actually shown you, but you know, you see these bookcases and there's bookcases over here and you might think I'm in like a closed off room, but there are windows here. There are French doors here. And then the kitchen is here. And this is only like a half a shelf. And then it's open into the kitchen and open into the um, family room. So it's very open right here. We're not in an enclosed room. It just is off of the um, kitchen, dining area, living room, like it's all open. Um, so the sound I know is a little different. I do have a microphone um, that I borrowed from a friend um, to see if that would help. And I used it once or twice, but I didn't really notice a difference. And like, that's just more time for me <laughs> to set up. So if it's not making a big difference, I don't want to do it. But this time I was like, I'm going to try the pillow method that some people talk about when they're making their YouTubes. I also have a small child's book of cozy poems. I've talked to you about this one before, but I didn't have the review out there the last time I talked to you. Uh, People We Meet on Vacation. How about that one? Emily Henry. That was a super fun read. I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned it in my video when I was reading it, but I didn't have it finished. And then Bedtime Stories 
of the Saints, which is another one I know I've talked to you about, but I didn't have the review out there when we talked last. So I'm going to talk to you about these, but I have a number of other books that I read since the last time that we met, which was, I think I published the last video the end of July and then promptly went on vacation. Um, but I know I finished a lot of books since then. I don't know the, the number right off the um, top of my head, but a lot of those I don't actually own. I'm getting to where I read pretty much a good mix of books that I actually own or can put my hands on to, or I borrow. There's some borrowed ones in here, um, or that I purchased or eBooks or audiobooks. I've really upped my audiobook um, consumption in the last, I would say three years. Um, that's another great thing about COVID. How about that? I'm looking for positive things to say about it. Um, the COVID experience is, I've had it twice. Um, but one of those things was definitely that I used my online library more, so eBooks and audiobooks. And that did help me start reading more modern books, which is something that I wanted to do over the last like five years, okay? Um, so let's talk about some of those books. Now, when I was saying, hey, here's my World's Fair shirt, and I mentioned it in the last video, and I said I should have worn it, so now I'm wearing it. Um, I know it's not, not the most flattering shirt. It is like as tight as I'll get out. Um, but I do highly recommend any of Eric Larson's books. Um, the Devil in the White City is a phenomenal read. True crime, for sure. Um, but reads like a novel. It's a, you know, I, there's their word, I think, for that genre even. I really enjoy it. Um, but then last Halloween-ish, um, I read, or no, I listened to Eric Larson's book, no one, no one goes alone on audio. And I do believe that was the only way that that book was released. There is no physical book. I don't think there is an ebook. Um, I seem to recall that he put it out there and said, hey, um, I want you to experience this ghost story as it should be experienced, which means somebody should be telling it to you. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I did really, really appreciate it. Um, all right, I am hot. My hair is down. The shirt is too tight. <laughs> The September 16th is when I'm filming this in Cincinnati. I'm sure the high is 80 something today. Um, I'm gonna go to the pool this weekend, my sister's pool, and because we are gonna just suck the life out of summer and get another pool day in there. But man, it is, it is really steamy. I'm gonna go put on a more comfortable shirt. Oh my goodness, okay, that is much better. Sorry, the hair has to go up. I've got to get on a more comfortable t-shirt. That was just a little bit too uncomfortable. Um, so do, before I get started on some of those books, I keep trying to show you like all my book related things here. Um, my mom bought me this pillow for my birthday a couple of years ago. It's got these two little foxes, which I absolutely adore in their reading. I think that's adorable. Um, and then, and I never show it to you because it's always behind my back on here. And then there's this, this is a throw that my husband bought for me for Christmas a couple of years ago. And I don't know if you can see it there. It's got book, um, word print on there. I want to say it's Jane Austen. It is. It's, pr it's Pride and Prejudice. So it's got like this one side, you know, that's that sheep's, you know, I don't know what that's called, but it's so soft. Um, and then the other side has the printed like words from Pride and Prejudice on it. So I always leave it in here. I like to come in here in the mornings. Um, I like to get up early and I like to come in here and read in the morning sometimes. And then sometimes in the evening, like again, when, um, you know, there's stuff going on in other parts of the house or um, it's beautiful <laughs> um, outside. Most of the time I'm on the porch if it's nice weather, but when it's not nice weather outside, um, this is a great place to sit and you still feel like you're outside because this is all windows and windows. So that's nice. Um, all right, let's get started. Okay, according to my notes, it looks like the last time that I filmed, it was in July, but it was mid-July when I actually filmed. Um, I released it at the end of July, but I didn't get a chance to talk to you about all the books that I finished in July. Um, so to continue my July books that I want to talk to you about, um, remember that I had talked to you about this one already. It's Bedtime Stories of the Saints. It says Frank Lee CSSR, uh, and it says book two. But it took me a while to get Goodreads to put it in Goodreads so that I could review it properly. Um, so there's that. It's lovely. I can't really remember how much I talked to you about it, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about it again. Um, it is the most adorable book. It was published in 1980. 
you know, you can call it a book, you can call it a pamphlet. I'm not sure exactly. Um, this might be something that, I don't know, maybe they handed out at church. I am not Catholic. Um, this seems to be from the Catholic faith, but I really, really enjoyed it. I like that it has language in it, that it tells you about each of the saints. Um, some you know, some you may not. Mary, Mother of Jesus, um, St. Alphonsus Liguori, St. Nicholas, St. Martin de Porres, St. Teresa, St. John Newman, um, and it tells you a little bit about their life and how they got sainthood, and then at the end of each story, it says, now go to sleep. I mean, that's how every one of them end. It's just like, blah, 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 like this is, um, to us, it must mean that if she could be mother of a God, then she could certainly be a mother to you and me. So our Lord cried out to all the world, behold your mother. Now go to sleep. And then the next one, well, actually, I'm not even going to do the next one. I'm going to do um, St. Nicholas because I thought, of course, that's one I can relate to. I know who he is, um, the original Santa Claus. And at the very end of that one, it says, please, in your prayers tonight, do remember that other sad little crowd, the children of Russia, St. Nicholas is also their patron. Pray that someday they may all come to hear of the Christmas story and know its warmth and love and beauty and the adorable gift of the baby God. Now go to sleep. <laughs> it's just a cute little thing, I'm sure, that um, parents read to their child at night as like an, uh, you know, a um, bedtime story, but also one that maybe isn't super exciting so that they would go to sleep. But I loved it, reviewed it. I put that review out there on Goodreads for you. It's very conversational. I'm not exactly sure how they know all the details that they put in this book, um, but it's, it is very much a storytelling kind of book, um, very personable. Sometimes the author even says, hey mom or hey dad, as if they know that the mom or the dad should be reading this to the child. So uh, really love this book, reviewed it on Goodreads. I don't know if you can get your hands on it. Actually, I think I need to loan it to a lady at school who saw that I put the review out there and was like, that's interesting. So I'm gonna take it to school on um, next week for her. All right, the number 54th book this year that I have read and am reviewing for you is The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile. That's what we're going to say. Um, and, you know, let's face it, any story that you're going to set in a library, I'm going to read, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, and this one was not great for me. I, I don't know. I saw it everywhere. I don't, I don't have a copy of it because I got it online. But if you see that, the cover is very recognizable. I saw it everywhere. Um, and it's got a super intriguing title. It's also suspenseful. So I thought this has got to be a great book for me. Um, but I listened to it. So you never know if that kind of affects how I take it. And it was okay, but I didn't love it. It involves murder. So again, I'm going to read it. Speaking of murder, even though I've been excited all week to come home on Friday and I've been planning to film another video for you and make sure that I get caught up and it's not going to be another two months before I get something out there. Um, in Ohio, starting Monday, the Pike County Massacre trial, the first person who went to trial, um, started on Monday. So I've been listening to the opening statements and they've been um, throwing those videos onto YouTube and just super interesting. I've been interested in this case since it was announced back in 2016 and I'm really interested in how they're going to prove that the current person on trial actually committed these murders. I think that's going to be very hard to do, um, but I'm super interested in it, so I really just want to watch the more of those court case um, proceedings. Um, but we're going to make this video. We're also going to edit it um, this weekend. That's what we're going to do. I will say in this one, the narrator's voice was a positive for me. I really like the narrator, so that wasn't the problem. Um, it also has that trope where it is an author writing a novel inside of another book, so inside of another novel. So The Woman in the Library is a novel about an author who's writing a novel. <laughs> and it parallels those stories. The author, Hannah, is paralleling the story of her, uh, in her novel, of that character. But it's... I, I would say it is complicated to follow, but I don't think that was the problem with it. It wasn't like it was so overly complicated that I couldn't keep things straight. They have a lot of the same themes that are running through them. There's definitely relationships and friendships and what a friendship means. They definitely have trust and mistrust issues. It's another one of those pandemic books. I've now ended up reading more books than not that mention the pandemic. And this is a fictional book that does address the pandemic. 
And it's got a lot of, of like twists and turns. I love that about a book. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm not really sure why I didn't like love it. And I didn't not like it, but I just kind of liked it. I don't know that I would try and find another book by this author or if they turned it into a series that I would go on with it. Um, and you know, it has some of those things in there. There's language in here, but I don't think it distracts from the story. I am not big at all on trigger warnings, but this one has a description of a sexual assault that got me a little bit. Like I wasn't expecting that at all, but again, I'm not big on trigger warnings, so I'm not complaining, but I am going to tell you, um, there is a sexual assault, just description. It's like a memory that they're remembering. Um, but ugh, ugh, I don't, I don't know. So not a full hearted recommendation, but it is a good mystery thriller. It was well done with the narrator, uh, The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile. I would be interested what you thought about it if you read it. The next one I do have a copy of. I borrowed it from my son's girlfriend, Hunter. She had this when we went down in July to visit them in Kentucky. Um, I saw that she had it. I commented on it, said I've been wanting to read it. She said she just finished it and I could borrow it. So I'll be returning it to her, but um, it's Emily Henry's People We Meet on Vacation. I have not read um, any other books by Emily Henry, but I will now. I really enjoyed this. I'm not a big like modern romance um, um, rom-com kind of fan when it comes to reading books. I always like them when I get them but they're not something I reach for for some reason, but I'll definitely go and find what else Emily Henry has read or written. And I know she wrote books like Beach Read. Um, uh, I feel like there are several others that here lately she's been putting together. I'll read anything she wrote. Like it was that good. I really enjoyed it. It was the perfect summer read. I know it looks summery. Any book that has a You've Got Mail reference, I'm gonna be reading. I love You've Got Mail. It's probably my favorite movie. Part of it takes place in Ohio, like they mentioned Hawking Hills. You can tell part of it is set in Ohio. So again, any book that's gonna bring Ohio into the reference, I'll read it. But the storyline, Alex and Poppy are college friends. Um, they're platonic friends, not that either of them probably hasn't thought about a little bit more, but it's just never worked out that way. They continue to be friends after they leave college, but then life happens and they do end up with, um, uh, what is that? Oh squirrels in the backyard have Stella looking very suspiciously at them. Um, but they decide to stay friends after college and go on these vacation getaways. They try and do like cheap getaways. Um, Poppy ends up being a travel writer basically uh, for an online magazine type of thing where some of these are, um, Stella scratching, uh, where she gets some of this stuff paid for and, um, and then they have a little episode, one of those vacations and it makes things awkward. So the story picks up where they are deciding to take another trip together. Um, things are awkward. They haven't really ironed things out. Um, super good. I really liked it. It really filled that gap that I have in not reading a lot of modern um, fiction romance. Uh, and I will pick up more of hers. Um, I love the main character. Poppy is definitely a weirdo. She's a weirdo from a weirdo family. So I like that description of how she feels about that and how she introduces herself to, um, well, not necessarily how she introduces herself, but how she brings it, like he knows her family. So like all of her secrets are out there and she feels like she, that, you know, he knows her, right? He knows where she comes from. He knows why she wanted to get away and um, you know, try and lead this different life in New York. Uh, she has a habit of making very ill-timed jokes like, I love her humor, but I totally know who she is. <laughs> Where sometimes in real life, you're like, oh my gosh, please stop. Just like, just, mm -mm, just stop doing it. I get it, but I really like her, especially in fiction. Uh, this is one of those books where it alternates back and forth. So, you know, where we pick up, or actually it goes back like five summers and you get a little snippet of what made things so uncomfortable. And then it goes back and forth between modern and then, you know, several summers before. So it's really kind of a weird um, timeline. Um, and some people are turned off by that, but I really thought it just flowed. I didn't have a hard time finding it at all, like following that at all. The author uses it as a great plot device. Now this is not a thriller page turner. It doesn't work like that. Like it did take me a little bit longer to read. 
um, because I wasn't worried about anybody. Nobody was getting killed or uh, being chased or stalked, like <laughs> all of those things that make me sometimes just like pick up a book and not set it down until I make sure everybody's going okay are going to be okay. It's not that kind of book, so it might have taken me a little bit longer, but not because I wasn't enjoying it. So I highly recommend Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I will seek out her other books and read those too. I gave it a four out of five. I forgot I didn't have a copy of this. My next one is Agatha Christie's Partners in Crime, a Tommy and Tuppence short story collection. Um, so I don't have a copy to show you of that one. Uh, and I have been trying to get all of the Agathas. You can see, where are you? That shelf right there, I believe, are my Agathas. Um, I've been picking them up at thrift stores, used bookstores. People have given me a lot of them. Um, so I have a lot of them so that when we are doing this um, online Agatha Christie uh, Zoom book club that I've talked about since January, probably just since December when I decided to do it and invite people to join along. Um, I've been picking them up, but there have been a couple of books that I've been unable to get a copy of and the Tommy and Tuppence Partners in Crime short story is one of them. So I don't have a copy of that one for you. Let me grab my Agatha Christie binder for that review. All right. Um, so I was actually pleasantly surprised by this one because I have not really enjoyed um, Tommy and Tuppence. Like the first time we read Tommy and Tuppence, I just, I didn't love it. Um, the first one was The Secret Adversary. We read it very early, so that might have a little something to do with it. But I don't know, I just, I did not love it. I also am not like a huge fan of the short stories, even when they feature Perot. So when I saw that this was going to be Tommy and Tuppence and it was going to be short stories, I was like, I mean, I'm going to read it. I'll have plenty to discuss, but I'm not going to love it. And I actually really, really liked it. This is the 11th book in the chronological reading of Agatha that we have done this year. I gave it four out of five stars, which I was not expecting because I didn't love Tommy and Tuppence. Um, but this one, I think I liked it a little bit more because there was this whole plot device going on where they are short stories. They are all featured on Tommy and Tuppence, um, but they do kind of have this thread running through them. And it was this like parody on all these other like mystery, um, mystery people or authors that were going on at the time. And by time, I mean like 1920s. So some of them I am not familiar with at all. And then some of them like Sherlock and even Perot is parodied. Um, those I do know a little bit more or I read up on some of it. So you know what? I don't even mind if the book doesn't stand on its own as me loving it. If it interests me enough that I'm going to go out and do some research to background it, um, that that's a score for me. So Tommy and Tuppence actually grew on me on this one. Uh, Father Brown is included too, and I have not read any of the Father Browns. I want to, but I haven't, um, by G.K. Chesterson, I think is who that's by. Um, but I do watch the Father Brown, the new Father Brown. I try watching the old one. I couldn't make it through it. But the new Father Brown on A Corner Brit Box, I really like that series. I've watched all of them, um, and she parodies him also. So I listened to the audio and I also read these, like the ebook version. So it was fine both ways. I just would rather have had it in print. It's easier for me to annotate when it's in print. I do have to say the first story in the book was a little bit of off-putting because uh, Tumpen, Tuppence is unethical. I mean, like there's no other way to say it. She literally traps somebody. She is unethical. And so I thought, oh, this is not going to be a good start. But then it does even out and I did really like it. Lots of Agatha themes in here and devices, the disguises, poisons, never trust the help, um, twins, all of that. They find it in here. I also was able to find some great sayings like, give him the beans. I love that. Give him the beans. Okay, what is that? Um, and just a lot of quotes as usual. So I'm happy with that. It was a very fun listen. I highly recommend it. Tommy and Tuppence, Partners in Crime, Short Stories. So the next one that's on my list that I finished is number 57 for the year. It's Janet Ivanovich's One for the Money. I listened to the audio and I feel like I talked to you about this a little bit. So I don't know. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I don't know why I would have it on here if I had already talked to you about it. Maybe because I was thinking about it. Um, but I love Janet Ivanovich. Um, I've, I've read or listened to several of her books. But I wanted kind of a refresher course and I wanted to do more of her books because I have a lot of them. Um, and I went out there and I found an audio, but it was an abridged audio. And I'm like, I didn't even know they did that anymore. Um, it was a great production. I highly recommend it. 
It's narrated by Lori Petrie. Is that what it is? Lori Petty. Lori Petty. Um, but it was a perfect way to experience Stephanie Plum, especially as a reminder. But quite frankly, like I could listen to all of them like this. So I did start ordering them like um, on Libby, the audio by Lori P uh, Petty so that I could continue having her be the voice of Stephanie. I really enjoyed it. Now I have read other Stephanie Plums. Um, I read Visions of Sugar Plums between the, uh, it's one of the, between the numbers, that holiday novel. Um, so I added um, a review on there for that. I tried to add any of the reviews for Stephanie Plums that I did not have before. Uh, I know that I reviewed it for you. I posted the review in uh, early July. Um, I definitely am revising my statement that <laughs> um, the Janet Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum series is a cozy. It's not a cozy. They are murder mysteries. They have a lot of humor, but they're not cozy. And I would say that because when I was listening to One for the Money, um, it was a bit too descriptive, again, of some violence and some... Um, the language was really heavy, and those don't necessarily fit into the cozy for me. Now, I'm not going to move them <laughs> because I rearranged my shelves this year. Um, so, I feel like that it was all in the video before, but I rearranged my shelves um, so that I have the um, Newberry Award winners, Book of the Month Club, like all of those are up there. And then I have my Agatha shelf. That's the one that you can see right here. And then I started on my cozies here. And in those cozies, I have the Lillian Jackson Braun, which is one of my all-time favorite cozy authors, probably who got me started on cozies, I would say. Um, and then I have Kate Carlisle, who I'll talk about quite a bit. The Coil, I've talked about her with the Coffee House Mystery Series. Uh, and a number of other cozy series or books that I have recommended so far. So that, you know, those are several um, shelves of cozies and I have Ivanovich right there um, right here I know I've shown you these covers I have quite a few of them um, I'm leaving them with the cozies although they aren't technically what I would call a cozy because of the language because of the very descriptive violence gore that are in there um, that's not so cozy and it's on the page it's not off the page like you don't just know it happened like you're there and that's a bit much for cozy I love the characters though. Lula, um, Mazur, Mazor, Mazor, I think it is. Granny Mazor, I think is her name. Um, Stephanie, I love those. I really enjoy Stephanie's spunk and her humor. Um, and I will definitely listen to more of these, of this series narrated by Lori Petty. I am also going to put Janet Ivanovich's Wicked Business, which is another, I think, um, series it is the lizzie and diesel like shoot off of the stephanie plum series i'm gonna put this on my short list um and then i also have a book that i borrowed that i'm pretty sure i showed you the cover but i'm going to show you before i give it back i know that i borrowed this to the nines because it has the lady that i borrowed it from her mother donna is the one who has read all these books and had them and she has her name in there. So here's another one that I know I talked to you about. It's a small child's book of cozy poems. It's illustrated by Cindy Zacharis. That's what we're going to say. Uh, but I didn't have that review out there on Goodreads. So I just wanted to revisit it real quick here. I gave this to my son when he was young. I think I put it in his Easter basket. You scare me to death. Yeah. No, you're not going out there right now. Okay, let me let Stella out. It is beautifully illustrated. There are names in here that I know that you know. Margaret Wise Brown, Langston Hughes, Jane Yolen. These are very famous authors um, who write for children at times. And the illustrations of like the mice and the flowers and the teacups. It is very cozy. I really just enjoyed this very short collection. And I put that review out there for you. On Goodreads, I gave it a 4 out of 5. The next one I want to talk to you about is Murder in a Locked Library. It is by Ellery Adams. I'm pretty sure I did a recent book haul with this one in it um, because I'm pretty sure that I bought it at the book rack on Beachmont Avenue. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I talked to you about going in there to try and find some Agatha Christie's like Partners in Crime that I didn't find. Um, but I ended up picking this up. It says I paid $4 for it, which would be right because it is $7.99 cover price. Um, and I knew that I wanted to read Ellery Adams. Like I just, 
I don't know how I haven't read anything else by her and she's like a number one best-selling like cozy author and I've just never read her before. Um, so here you go. It's a great little cover. It definitely follows all the rules when we're talking about cozies. It's got, you know, a cat or a dog on the cover. There are books on the cover. It's taking place in a library. It has a punny title, Murder in the Locked Library, a Permanently Checked Out. That's adorable. Um, it's part of a series. It's called the Book Retreat, A Book Retreat Mystery Series. Uh, and it's not the first one in the series. So it's the first one I had. Um, remember, I'm a part of that cozy um, mystery book talk chat on YouTube. Um, Beach Bum Bookworm runs it. Uh, Killing Time with Cozies. We meet most Saturdays, I would say, on YouTube um, to, for just a live chat. And um, when I told them I was reading this, they said, ooh, you might want to go back and read that in order. But I don't have the other ones. So I started with this one. Um, this is number four in the series. Actually, it wasn't too bad to pick up um, in, you know, like on number four, not reading one, two, and three. I could tell kind of what was going on. I had kind of a feel for the characters. I was a little lost when she's describing some of her um, relationships, like a relationship that she has with someone who's not there. Um, so a little bit lost on there, but I mean, I feel like I got a good feel for it. She has several other series, the books by the Bays, Charmed Pie, Shop Mysteries, The Secret Book, and Scone Society. I've heard a lot about that one. That one comes highly recommended. But this particular ser series takes place in a place called Storyton Village. And in Storyton Village, please can we all go there, um, there are all of these book themed places that you can go. Um, and one of them is this book retreat that you can go to. Um, they have a head librarian, Sinclair. And the lady who is basically telling you the story, is she telling it in first person? Her name is Jane Stewart. No, it's told in third person, but um, you're mainly following around Jane. Um, she's the resort manager. Uh, what I do think is really cool is they do, and again, I'm sure it's because, you know, it's a uh, um, series that you pick up every, every once in a while. Um, I feel like I have this other one, Murder in a Secret Garden, but I haven't read it yet. That might be number three. I might own it and I haven't read it, but it sounds super familiar. Maybe I just picked it up here lately. Anywho, um, there is a map of Storyton in here. So a little community, there's a map. Um, and then there's also this, where it is a list of characters in the book. Um, so it says like, welcome to Storyton Hall. Our staff is here to serve you. Resort manager, Jane Stewart, that's who we're following around. The butler, Mr. Butterworth, head librarian, Mr. Sinclair. And then it goes through like merchants in Storyton Village, um, run for the cover bookshop, Daily Bread Cafe, the Cheshire Cat Pub. Just cute, very cute. Now I will say even though it's cute, like I said, I was a little disappointed um, when I was reading this that it didn't really read like a cozy. It wasn't quite as cozy. It was a very cozy place. We had some very cozy characters, um, but it was dark. Like it was darker than I was expecting. I think I just like more humor in my cozies. Like, um, you know, I like for it to follow all the rules. I like the punny title. I like the cozy covers. I like for it to have a cat or a dog or something in it. Um, so there are a lot of things about it that I do like, but it was just darker with less humor than I like in my cozies. There was a bit of a romance, but again, it was off the page because he wasn't there during this particular book. My guess is during one, two or three, or maybe all three, um, you have a bit more romance in them. There's a lot of title dropping since they're at a book retreat. You do get some title dropping in there. I love that. Um, I love that um, the twins are named after famous authors. So again, here we have a main character. I say again, I don't know where I'm again. Um, we have a main character who is a woman sleuth, but she actually has twins. Um, they're named after famous authors Hemingway and Fitzgerald. Um, I love that there's a book club involved. That part's cool. It's an awesome concept. I would go and visit, even though murder probably happens there once every book. I'm just guessing. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I would read more, even though it's not necessarily my favorite type of cozy. I want to see more Ellery Adams. I want to see if her other story uh, or her other series, her other series like um, the Scone, Book and Scone Society. I'm interested to see if it um, is as dark as this one. I would like to know. So, recommending it, still recommending it. I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to on the first shot. 
All right, this next one, I have a copy, so I just have to go find it. Uh, but I actually borrowed it from someone, read it in two or three days. Um, but then I did find it at a uh, thrift shop or used bookstore or something and picked it up. So let me find it for you. All right, so here it is. It's the last thing he told me. You can see it's a Reese's Book Club. So hello, sunshine. Um, it's by Laura Dave. It says author of 800 Grapes. So I'll be looking that one up because I really enjoyed this read. Um, I would call it modern fiction. Um, kind of a thriller mystery. Um, more thriller probably than mystery, but not so much thriller that you're constantly worried about someone or violence. It was kind of an unraveling of a mystery. Um, I really enjoyed it. Like, like I said, I borrowed it from a friend. I knew that I was leaving on my trip to Florida. Um, like two or three days later, two or three, God, I'm trying to think like, I'm pretty sure it was two days later. Um, and I was reading it on the way to the airport because I told my husband, I'm like, I have to finish this before I leave because I don't want to take a half read book with me. Um, and I did finish it and I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it a five out of five. Um, you know, that might be a little bit generous, but I think I'm giving it a five out of five because I really enjoyed it. It's um, a book that I don't get to read a lot of books like that. And I say get to, it's like, who's telling me what I can and can't read, but like our book club or um, books that I'm reading for Agatha or books I'm reading for the classroom. Um, and then I'd read all these cozies. Like I just have not fit this kind of book in as much as I want to. And my gosh, for me to read it in two or three days, why am I not reading more books like this? I'm definitely going to call it a page turner. Um, it would be an excellent book for a beach trip or just any kind of a trip. Maybe you're just going away for the weekend. This is a book you can get done in a weekend. It's super suspenseful. It's true to the uh, Reese's uh, tag on there. I feel like this is a lot of her kind of book. Um, actually, the main character is one that you never get to meet. His name is Owen Michaels. Um, he's gotten himself into a pickle. He's working for a company that um, ends up getting um, investigated. And in the course of the investigation, he has other things that are more private than what's being investigated. So he disappears and he leaves behind his wife and his daughter, who is her stepdaughter. Um, and they've never had a great relationship before. And all of a sudden the husband is gone, leaving these two together. And um, his last words to his wife were protect her because he knows that even though they don't have this great relationship, she's trying to have a good relationship with her and he knows that she will protect his child. Um, Hannah, the main character that we are following along here, and again, I'm pretty sure we're in third person, um, but we are following Hannah. No, she says against mine. So Hannah's actually telling us the story from her. I hear Jake start to bite on his pen. No one else in the world would decipher this uh, is what he's doing, his secret habit. So it is in first person, told from the point of view of Hannah, the wife, the stepmother, um, and she knows like he's not a bad guy. So there has to be a reason why he's disappeared. He would not walk away from his family. He would not do it unless he had a really good reason. Um, so she sets out to do just that. She's going to protect Bailey, the child um, who's a teenager. Um, but she also is going to get to the bottom of it. She's not just going to sit back and say, okay, you disappeared. We're going to go on with our lives. Um, unfortunately, her getting to the bottom of it uh, may or may not put them into harm. Um, the FBI, there's a U.S. Marshal that's involved, and she has to figure out how all these people are involved, who to trust and who not to trust, and then figure out who her husband is. Super good. I want to say it is being turned into a movie. I don't think I have that in my notes, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it's told, like, as it's happening, like when he disappears, but then she has these flashbacks to try and give you a glimpse into here's who I thought he was. I mean, how can this guy sit beside me and have these conversations and then disappear and leave behind his daughter who is his entire life? Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, super good. So I'm giving it a four out of five. Ooh, no, I'm giving it a five out of five. Yeah, I changed it because I'm like, okay, four out of five. And then I'm like, how can you say four out of five? And you literally read it in like two or three days and you could not put it down and you were thinking about it and you can still remember all those details. That's a five out of five. So five out of five. 
and I will keep you updated on that movie or TV series, whichever one it was. All right, the next one was a Stuart Woods book called Choke. I did have a copy of it. I read the copy, but I left it in Florida. It's one that I specifically took, so I could leave it there. Um, my cousin has um, two spare bedrooms, and so she always keeps books there for guests, and I'm like, ooh, I think this would be a good one to leave in Florida. Um, I like Stuart Woods. I have read Dirty Work, and I read Under the Lake, two other books by him. Um, all of his books are what I would call a thriller for sure. Some of them have police officers as their main characters, but not all of them. Um, in this particular one, it is there is a police officer in it, and part of the story is told from his point of view, but most of it centers on um, Chuck Chandler. Chuck is now known as Choke because he has choked. He's a major tennis star, um, and he chokes. He chokes at the wrong time, so now he is, you know, um, what do you call that like delegated he, to go to like um uh, like tennis camp um what do you call those places like um clubs and uh like coach people in tennis or give tennis lessons to uh, retired or rich people <laughs> um that's now what he's doing uh while he's there he uh gets way too much action on the side from married women and gets himself in trouble so he has had to move around quite a bit I thought this would be a good one to read in Florida because I knew that it took place in Key West. Uh, and I love reading like um, regional books when I am on vacation. Uh, so I specifically searched this one out. I read it the whole plane right there and then finished it up when I was there. It was super easy. Um, you know, I don't see on here how many pages it is, but it's probably four or 500 pages, but super easy read. This is a standalone. It's not part of Stuart Wood's other series. Um, like the uh, Holly Barker or the Stone Barrington. Those are ones that he's famous for. This is not a series book. It's a standalone, but it reads very similar to those books. So Chuck Choke Chandler uh, gets himself involved with Claire Karras um, when he is in Key West and he's giving tennis lessons. She's a married woman and she is married to the wrong guy to fool around on. Um, he gets himself into very hot water uh, and uh, finds out that this might not be one he's going to be able to walk away from easily. Super good thriller. Highly enjoyed it. Mm, I don't know if I rated it or not. I did. Four out of five because I thought it was a really good read. Um, and I will read anything that Stuart Woods writes. So I did put out a review there for Dirty Work also. I have a copy of that. Yes, I do have a copy of that. Stuart Woods, Dirty Work. Super, super good book. Um, I read it a long time ago. You can see it says it is a Stone Barrington novel. Um, I read it a long time ago, and I think I picked this up recently in thrift. Look at that. Hello, sir, Stuart Woods. Um, I read it back in 2004. It was published in 2003, um, and I really enjoyed this one. Now, let me see here. Got to remind myself on this one. Uh, I did just add the review. Um, I have to say, I don't remember much of it. Sometimes I think that that's why these are so good is they're easy to pick up, they're fun to get into, but you read them so quickly and it's not that complicated of a plot that I don't remember it quite as much. Uh, but Stone Barrington hits the streets of Manhattan in search of a dangerous woman. The circumstances behind the death of a very rich husband, I think you see a thread here, um, in the sexy new thriller in the New York Times bestselling series. Back in New York City, after the London adventure of the short forever, cop turned lawyer Stone Barrington is assigned by his law firm, Woodman and Wheel, to aid an important client in her quest to dump her unfaithful husband. Stone thinks the job is ordinary, dirty work, but then he finds that, th that things take a murderous turn and the FBI and a foreign intelligence service become involved. Um, so, really like it. I enjoyed this one here and I have several other Stuart Wood books that I plan to put on my reading list. Um, I have Dirt. I have Skin Game. This one. Stuart Woods and Parnell Hall, Smooth Operator, a Teddy Faye novel featuring Stone Barrington. And this Parnell Hall is another person that I want to read some of. I think I might have some books by him or her. Um, so I'll take a look-see there. Let's see if we can find a picture. We cannot. 
but it says Parnell Hall is an actor, screenwriter, singer, songwriter, the author of more than 40 novels. He was awarded the I Lifetime Achievement Award. So um, yeah, I feel like I might have some of those too and I think they're murder mysteries. So I'm interested to read this one. Um, do I have another one? Nope, those are my three that are on my Stuart Woods um, list of books to read. But I do really highly recommend the other Stuart Woods books, Dirty Work, Under the Lake was a good one, and then also Choke that I just recently read back in August. So while I was in Florida at my cousin's, I always take a look at her bookshelf. She always has some books I wanna read. I don't know how I didn't read this the last two times that I've been down there, but I read In the Market for Murder by Schiff. Let me find it, Jennifer Schiff. I think that's how you say it. Um, here it is on Goodreads. I did rec or I did review it for you there. Um, I gave it a three out of five. I liked it. I would actually even continue reading the sort the series. I know three out of five doesn't sound like a like real hearty recommendation, but I really enjoyed it. Sometimes I get a little irritated with Goodreads and cozy mysteries because you know before I read the book, sometimes I'm reading the reviews and people like put down a book because it's not literary. It's a cozy mystery. They're not meant to be literary novels. They're meant to be cozies, which are just light, enjoyable reads, maybe when you're sitting on the beach. Um, and that's what this was. Like I did really enjoy just reading it on the beach. Stella, why are we barking at every little thing? So this cozy does have those things that I say, okay, it's a good cozy, I enjoyed it, and I would read more of the series. There is a very interesting main character, Guinevere Jones. She has a very interesting job. She's a reporter for a local paper. You do always wonder how these people who are just a reporter for a local paper and they pull out like one story every week or something and they are always eating in cafes and meeting people for lunch. And I'm like, God, how much do you get paid to be a local reporter on the crime beat um, that you can live this way? But thus is fiction. I do love that they live in this locale. She's on Sanibel Island. <laughs> She does barely seem to ever go to work. So like she's investigating something that's really not even hers to investigate. Stella, I need you to stop. So it checks off all those boxes for cozy mystery. Uh, it's a fun little romp around a little, you know, area of the Sanibel Island where you have all these people who work in this little area. Um, a group of great characters, a very nondescript murder, like I said, it is off the page. They walk in, the person is already dead. It's not gory. And it might be because this is, again, the third book in the series, um, and I started there instead of like being invested in the first two. But I like it enough that I would go back and read the first two. Uh, and that might be why I'm reading this one in um, a little negative, like I'm thinking the boyfriend might be a mastermind serial killer. Um, but that might be because I don't know him too. I'm not sure, like I really enjoyed it, but I don't know all the history that's there behind her and this boyfriend or her and the um, cop that is the, you know, the person in charge that the minor sleuth is working with or against. Um, but mission accomplished. It was a great cozy to read while I was on my vacation in Florida. Um, three out of five, and I do recommend it. The In the Market for Murder by Jennifer Schiff. Jennifer Schiff, I think is how I'm gonna say it. Number 63, I also read while I was down there. My cousin actually didn't own this one. She had it checked out from the library. It's called Last Call, Bartenders on Their Final Drink and the Wisdom and Rituals of Closing Time. This is a beautiful like coffee table kind of book, but of course I just kept picking it up and reading it the whole time I was there and I really enjoyed it. It's a beautifully crafted book full of photos and commentary of um, just bartenders around the United States. I think they were all in the United States. And um, it goes on the game of, you know, if you ask a bartender, what is your final favorite drink? Like what would you, if you only had one more drink, what would it be? Um, so they do that, but they give a lot of information with that. They talk about the bars that they work with, um, the bars that they work at, the people that they work with. I did a quick flip and then I just couldn't help going back and digging in each day and reading a little more. So I do recommend that one. I recommend that you um, check that out from the library or purchase it because it is a beautiful book to have in your hands. Next one, Kate Carlisle's The Paper Caper. Um, again, I have read all of the Kate Carlisle, the Bibliophile Mystery Series, and also the Fixer Upper Mystery Series. Um, and this is The Paper Caper. 
Um, remember, I am one of Kate's readers, so I did get this book for free in um, exchange for a fair review, which I did. This is number 16 in the Bibliophile Murder Mystery series. In this particular one, Brooklyn finds herself once again at the foot of murder. Each of the books centers on a different book that Brooklyn is working on or restoring. She is a book restorer. And in this one, it is Mark Twain's um, The Prince and the Pauper. That is the book that it's all around. But there's a whole book festival that it centers around this time. Um, and of course, then Murder and Mayhem ensue. I like that it involves a community book festival, um, that they are doing Mark Twain themed things like the uh, jumping frog contest, that sort of thing. There's a look-alike contest and um, the local uh, newspaper's owner um, is holding a look-alike contest. So that's how this kind of gets started. I really like how Carlisle does weave in the story of like, in this one, it's the book restoration. She puts a lot of that kind of detail and information in there in the fixer upper. You know, again, do I ever want to build a house? I do not. Do I want to do physical labor trying to build like work on things on houses? I do not. But reading about that process has been quite fun. Okay, but <laughs> here lately, you know, I've been studying Agatha and studying Agatha, I came across what is known as the detective rules. These are official rules that Agatha was a part of a group that they agreed if you're writing murder mysteries, here are things you can't do. Um, and one of those is never bring in a twin late in the game. Um, so this one kept, kept hinting at a relative or a twin. So my hackles were already up. I'm like, mm, are we not going to follow the rules, Kate? I feel like you should probably know the rules for the detective club. Another thing I really like about this one is that the, um, the characters that we have come to know and love are scattered throughout the book. So they, they might not even be a big part of the plot, but they step in to visit for the weekend or come to one of the events. I really like that so that we still get to see them because it'll be another... Um, probably a year before we get another one of these books and another six months one of the fixer upper mystery series books will come out but we probably won't see Brooklyn and her um, cast of characters for another year so I don't like to go you know a whole book without hearing a little bit of an update about mom and dad and the brothers or the, um, the sister and laws the also a sister but that's also the reason I think that reading this series in order is very important which is probably why some of the people that read some of these other series that like you're starting on book three that's not going to work that's what I would say about these. Read them in order. They're more enjoyable that way. I totally think you could pick up the book and read it, but I think it's way more enjoyable if you have started at the beginning and you know Brooklyn's journey. Um, I will say that the dialogue seemed a little off in this one. Like the exchange between Brooklyn and Derek, who is her, you know, boyfriend. No, they got married. So her, her husband. I don't know. The dialogue seemed a little bit like um, zany, a little zanier than normal. Um, definitely had humor in it and very dark humor at times, which is in the other books, but the dialogue in this one was a little zany, I think. Like, just a little weird. But all in all, I absolutely love the series. I loved getting to go along on another adventure with Brooklyn, and I love that it was Mark Twain themed. All right, number 65, I do not have a copy to show you, and we don't see this very often, two out of five. That's right, folks, two out of five. Um, it's an elderly lady, must not be crossed. Uh, it's by Helen Turson. It's a um, series of short stories, but they are all interconnected. Like, until I realized they were short stories, I just thought it was a very choppy novel. Um, I listened to it on audio. I listened to it on the plane, I think on the way back. Um, I did not love it. I barely liked it. I can appreciate it. I wouldn't recommend it. It was about five hours on audio. I loved the cover. I think that's what stood out to me. I also think maybe I heard of other mystery series that involved elderly ladies, and I thought this might be one of those. And it is, but I didn't care for her. I didn't care for the character, which you know I have problems if I don't like my main characters. Um, but I also just did not enjoy the story. Like it was, it was too much. I just didn't appreciate. <laughs> Um, what the character was going through and the choices that she made. And it made me think like, what other books have I read where the murderer is the main character telling the story? And can I be sympathetic to a murderer? Can I, you know, do the same thing they're doing? Can I make excuses for when murder might be okay? Um, and this one, I cannot. I didn't like her. I didn't like how she made her choices. I wasn't entertained. I wasn't even entertained. 
Again, this is number two in a series and I'm reading number two without reading number one. Maybe I would have fallen in love with that character in book one, but I don't think so. I don't think I ever want to meet this lady. I don't want to hear her story. Not interested. Maude just seems sinister to me. She is troubled. I see enough troubled people in my regular life. I am not entertained by them. So it's well done. It's well written. It's not my style. I don't like it. Two out of five. Number 66. Uh, this is the mysterious Mr. Quinn. Let's put that guy up there. I'm actually going to move these to the side. I love that cover. Um, this is the first book that we meet Harley Quinn, one of Agatha Christie's reoccurring characters. Um, he is definitely a harbinger of uh, murder to come or a harbinger of solving a murder. So it's just really interesting. I really enjoyed it. I didn't know what to expect about Harley Quinn, quite frankly, until I started reading Agatha this year. I didn't even know that Harley Quinn was a character of hers. Now remember, anytime I'm talking to you about one of these Agatha books, remember that I held a two hour Zoom meeting where we broke the book down um, and talked about all sorts of things, as well as um, reading various quotes throughout the book. Like I do a lot of annotating and note taking, and I don't want to bog you down with that in these videos. So I just give you a short review um, and recommendation most times. And then I hope to do one of those, you know, separate videos where I go into detail, more detail about those Agatha books. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I gave it a four out of five. Um, I'm not, you know, as blown over by Harley Quinn as I am by Perot, but I really like him. I want to see him again. I look forward to seeing him again. Um, this is a series of short stories. So again, I was a little worried about reading short stories. They're not always my favorite in the Agatha series, but this one, absolutely like very well done meeting mr holly quinn is a delight and actually a bit off of christy's style i mean he he's different like he's a little magical um definitely more superstition in the harley quinn stories there's always funny business going on when harley quinn shows up um but luckily with the funny business always comes clarity like a case is solved, someone realizes how something can happen um, or be explained. And honestly, the stories are told through someone else. They're told through Mr. Um, I think we decided to say his name is Satterwave. Um, and he is also a great addition as a narrator to Christie's stories. I do love an older character, so especially like a Perot or a Mr. Satterwaith where they have found their purpose and their purpose is to help solve these crimes. Um, I love that kind of character. That's why I couldn't believe I didn't like an elderly lady must not be trusted. Um, but that's because these are enduring characters and an old lady must be must never be trusted. She's scary. There's something wrong with her. Um, so. I would highly recommend reading Agatha Christie's, and this is the introduction, The Mysterious Mr. Quinn. I feel like I've mentioned it before, but I'm not sure. Um, I always listen to the All About Agatha podcast when we read the book. So like, I try to acquire the book. I try to read the book. Then I listen to the All About Agatha podcast, describing the book, talking about it. Um, I take notes on that, and then I try and find all the adaptations. There's not an adaptation for this, like um, there's not a movie or a TV series that I could find, other than the um, Harley Quinn, um, it was a, I don't know, did I, I did, HBO has a Harley Quinn, obviously it's not Agatha's Harley Quinn, but I thought, oh, I'll watch this and see if there are con some connections. Now, man, I really pride myself on not being a um, stuffy old woman, but Ugh, I barely can make it through it. I did not enjoy it. There was so much language um, and just, ugh, I didn't like it. The adaptations like cartoon, manga, graphics, some, I mean, like it was just weird to start with um, and I can appreciate it for that, but I forgot HBO and language. Um, I don't feel like I'm sensitive to language, but I'm very sensitive to the GD word. <laughs> like I am religious and if you want to take the Lord's name in vain, I struggle with that and it was in there a lot so I'm sure that that was part of it so I only made it through the first episode I don't recommend that series but I do highly recommend the mysterious mr. Quinn by Agatha Christie that one I do highly recommend 
So blame my Southern Baptist roots, but if you take the Lord's name in vain, I'm going to wince. I'm going to wince every time. And I spent more time wincing when I was trying to watch that HBO um, uh, adaptation than I did trying to follow the storyline. So highly recommend this. Don't highly recommend the HBO Harley Quinn series. The next book I read was number 67 this year. The 67th book I'm going to review for you. Um, it is actually by Sophie, uh, Sophie Hanna, but it is The Monogram Murders, a new Hercule Poirot mystery series, and it's the first one in the series. Now, this was published back in 2014, um, but again, I really only got on the Agatha Christie bandwagon within the last year, um, so I didn't know this was a thing. You can see, again, I don't have the book. I borrowed my cousin's, um, and then I finished it up on audio whenever I came back home. Um, so I did kind of both of those. Now, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. I liked it, and I liked it enough that I would continue listening to the series, I would think. Maybe not reading it, but listening to it. I gave it a three out of five because I did enjoy it. It just seemed to take a little too long. I feel like it was very true to Hercule Poirot. It was very true to Agatha. Um, one of the things I really like about Agatha, though, is I always have a list of words, like, when I get to the end of the book, I have underlined numerous words that she uses that I just find delightful. And I didn't see that in the Sophie Hanna one. I thought that was a little strange. Um, but Her Hercule Poirot's character is the same. The way the unraveling of the story is the same. Um, we don't have Hastings. He's not narrating it. But the, um, oh, what was his name? Edward Catchpole. So that character really added to the story. <clears throat> He's a good match for Perot. I like the quote reference to all the devil, devils are here. I feel like I've heard that numerous times here lately. All the devils are here. Um, and it is a literary reference, but it was also a recent Louise Penny novel that I read at the beginning of the year. Um, there are multiple deaths in this one. Um, and some Christie stories do that, not a lot. But with the multiple deaths in this one and then the way the story unraveled was a little new. But it still felt very Agatha Christie-ish, like that it was, um, you know, being revealed. The only thing that I would say is, and maybe this is because I was listening to it on audio, I knew who the culprit was by the time we got there, but then it took forever to wrap it up. Now, Agatha and Hercule, like a gathering of people and the unraveling of a mystery, but this one was a little much. Like, it took a long time to tell the end of the story and get there. So all's well that ends well. I do highly recommend it. I will look for more Sophie Hanna books, um, and I will probably listen to those, especially since the um, Agatha Christie estate is behind that. Like, they're okay with her continuing Perot story. The 68th book, and again, I don't have a copy of it because I listened to this on audio, which is how I would recommend that you also listen to it. But I will be buying a copy of this book, rereading it, and underlining and taking notes. Um, it is Bird by Bird, Some Instructions on Writing in Life. It's by Anne Lamont. This book was published, um, oh, I don't even know when it was published, a long time ago, uh, like at least a decade ago. Um, so the fact that I'm just now getting to it is embarrassing as an English teacher because she talks about the craft of writing and she gives some great advice, um, some great analogies, and some great examples. I wish I would have read it sooner. I need a copy of this book. It's on my list. Um, I want to reread it and take notes. It's a five star for me for sure. It is kind of hard to classify because I laughed. Um, there is some language in there. There's a little bit of religious talk in there. There's a lot of craft talk in there about the craft of writing. Um, and I don't just mean I didn't feel like she wasn't talking to me. You know, I'm not going to publish anything soon that I know of. Um, I just like to write. I like to journal. I like to, um, you know, transpose my thoughts. It's therapeutic to me, and I don't know that I'll ever publish anything, but I still felt like she was talking to me. She's funny. She's heartfelt. She's inspiring. She keeps it very real. If you are a writer, if you are a teacher of writing, if you are a human being, <laughs> read this book. I'm going to read it over and over and over again. I'm going to play parts of it for my students. I'm going to read parts of it to my students. So good. Chef's kiss. This was a five out of five. Okay, so I don't know why I can't seem to find a copy of the next book that I'm reviewing for you. It's This Is Your Mind on Plants. It's by Michael Pollan and it's an audio. Um, I loved it, five out of five stars. 
can't find the review for you. So I'm just gonna talk about it. Um, I have talked about Michael Pollan before. Um, I really, really enjoy his books. Let me find something to show you. I know I've talked to you about The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan. Um, I've also talked about Food Rolls. Look how beautiful that one is. That's also by him. Um, and I just didn't have a copy of my Mind on Pl The Mind on Plants, Your Mind on Plants. This is Your Mind on Plants. Um, so I listened to it on audio. He reads it, so it is just lovely. Um, I have gone to listen to him in person. He gave a speak at, I believe it was Miami University one time. Um, and it was so worth the trip down there. Um, I believe that one was when he did Food Rules, if I'm not mistaken. Um, really, really enjoyed it. I really wish I had a copy of my review um, to tell you about it. Michael Pollan, um, I know I've also talked to you. I have his book, Cooked. Um, there's also a Netflix series, I believe by the same name that I've talked to you about too. Um, so I just, I'm gonna read anything he writes. If he um, has a podcast, if he has a TV show, I'm gonna dip into those too. Um, because he has lots of really, really good information. Um, and in This Is Your Mind on Plants, he talks about caffeine. Um, he talks about several substances. I gave it a five out of five stars. Um, but it's a great listen to have him talk to you through this. I admit I was more I was more interested in the part that was talking about caffeine, like coffee, our addictions to it, what it does to our mind. Um, that was the part that I was really listening to. But the other two are opium and mescaline. Mescaline, mescaline. I can't remember how he said it now. Um, and those were also really good information, just not as applicable to me as maybe caffeine. I am a coffee fan. But his gift of storytelling makes science interesting to me. Um, science is not really my thing normally, but I read his books and they are very science-based. It's another one of those books that mentions the pandemic. So we are now to the point where more books that I read than not mention the pandemic um, and how they affected the author or the character within the author's fiction story. Now I will say, This Is Your Mind on Plants does feel a bit new age-ish if that's your thing or not. I don't care one way or the other, I'm just happy to get the information. Uh, but I think uh, one of the most surprising things to me was how much I laughed while I was listening to him. His experiences, his thought process when he was doing some of his experiments, um, his personal just stories, they were funny, he's funny. Um, the way that he's very open with you. It's very funny. Uh, so five out of five, highly recommend listening to This Is Your Mind on Plants. It's nonfiction. It's by Michael Pollan. These other books I highly recommend too, but I've already talked to you about them, I'm sure. I do need to make sure that I have uh, reviews out there for all of those, but I'll make sure and get back with you on that if not. The next book that I want to talk to you about is another Agatha. Yes, I know. What have I done? Three Agathas? That's because I haven't talked to you in a month and we've been reading them like every two weeks. But um, <laughs> this is what my copy of Murder at the Vicarage ended up looking like. Um, luckily, I only paid $2.50 for this paperback copy at the um, Book Rack of Murray. And this is why I didn't want to pay more than that. Remember the last time I went back there, like the books were more expensive. They were like, you know, over $5. Some of them were $10. And I don't really want to do that um, because I have a lot of Agatha books to buy. And then also when you're talking about these older um um, copies of editions of the Agathas, they tend to fall apart. This is not the first one that has come undone while I've been reading it. Um, but the good news is that I also found a great copy um, of Agatha Christie's Murder at the Vicarage. Um, I don't remember where I bought this. I think, it, well, it's got a half price books um, like discount thing in there. So maybe that's where I bought it. I don't remember. I don't see a price tag on it. But this is a beautiful one. It's from the Agatha Christie collection. Um, and just, you know, feast your eyes on that cover. That's a beautiful cover. Uh, but this is um, the latest one that we have discussed. That is one up there. The latest one that we have discussed in our Agatha meeting. And it is the first time that I get to meet, finally, Miss Jane Marple. I was so excited. I was not disappointed. Um, 
I will have to say it's a great introduction to her. You do not get to know her intimately like you feel like you do with Perot the first time you're reading Perot. Um, she's definitely like there, but several people in the group were like, I am surprised that we're gonna call this a Jane Marple um, uh, book because she doesn't play that big of a part. Um, and I think it's very clear when you're also watching the adaptations that it's like she's an onlooker because she does see the whole thing and then she puts in her two cents. Um, she seems very nosy and it's the setting up of that character. So Perot is part of the investigation. Miss Marple is a bystander and she's an old lady and nobody looks at old ladies. They don't pay attention. Um, they don't really give what they say credit. And then she says, oh, you don't understand what's happening here? Here's what happened. So you're still getting that fireside chat kind of um, revelation at the end of it. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed visiting St. Mary Mead um, and starting to meet some of these characters. I'm super interested to see who else comes back. So obviously we're going to continue with Miss Jane Marple, but who else um, will be reoccurring characters? I know we meet the vicar and his wife again, and they're great characters. It actually is narrated by the vicar. Um, so just super, super enjoyed it. I am glad that we finally meet Miss Marple. I had lots of notes. Uh, we had a great conversation around this one. So highly recommend Agatha Christie's Murder at the Vicarage, your introduction to Miss Jane Marple in 1930. Um, I don't have my review out of this one, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you because I just finished it. Um, and then I will probably talk about it again once I put the review out there and then add it to the stack. I borrowed this one, so I don't have a copy of it for you, but it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have already recommended a book to you by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Daisy Jones and the Six. I listened to the audio last summer and I was blown away. Um, I didn't love this one as much, but I did enjoy it. Um, it redeemed itself in the end for me because until then it was a bit more like just drama and somebody else's drama that I don't really need to read about. So until the character development and the story development kind of got rolling, I wasn't near as interested. Um, but in the end, several little things went in there that were more like Taylor Jenkins Reid style. Um, and I did enjoy it. So I do highly recommend it. I would say I'll probably give it a three out of five. I liked it. I like Taylor Jenkins Reid. I didn't love this one, but it was a fun conversation. It was a good choice for our book club. It kicked off our book club for this year. Um, so I'll have more to say about it like after I do the review, I'm sure, but I did just finish it. So I want to include that one. And that takes me to number 71 for this year. So remember my goal is 100, so I'm right on track. I don't think I'll have a problem getting to 100. I'm hoping my cousin said, you're setting your goal the same as last year? Maybe set it at 101. And so I'm like, I don't know why I didn't do that. I love that. Why would I not want to do 101 and try and beat it? Um, because until I get to the point where I feel like, oh my gosh, I couldn't read any more than I'm already reading, then my goal should be higher. So there are things um, that I try to employ more of this year, like reading 100 pages a day or reading for at least an hour a day or listening for an hour a day when I couldn't read. Um, all of those things I think have taken me to where I'm at 71 on September 16th. And I know that there are a lot of other times that I laid down and scrolled instead of read. Um, I will say these are the ones I've read so far that I'm recommending to you, but I'm reading a couple of great ones right now. I'm reading one on my phone on NetGalley, uh, which is not my favorite way to read a book, but it doesn't seem to matter on this one because I really like it. Um, it is called Half Baked. Um, let me see who it's by. It is by Emily George. It's called A Cannabis Bakery Mystery. Um, and I think that's why, like I heard somebody talked about it in um, the Killing Time with Cozy's group and I was like, all right, we are stepping out of our comfort zone on cozy mysteries that have to do with like the cat who, uh, when we're gonna have a cannabis cafe cozy mystery. How cozy is it? Very cozy, I love it. Um, I know, I don't think you're gonna be able to actually see the cover too much there, so look it up. Um, a Half-Baked Murder by Emily George. It does not come out um, until I think even next year, like spring. So I'll do a better job of reviewing that once I finish it, but really enjoying that one. I'm reading it on my phone. Like that's how much I enjoy it, um, that I don't even mind that it's on that little screen. 
Um, let me find another one here. At school, for my school shelves, I am reading Lori Halls Anderson's Twisted, um, Senior Year is Twisted. I have already recommended Speak, Prom, um, several others by her that I'll do a better job once I finish this and do the review. Um, I have already recommended those to you, but I have never read this one. I've never read Winter Girls, and I have copies of those in the classroom, so I would like to read both of those. This is way more lighthearted than Speak. There's some serious stuff going on, but it's not near as dark as Speak. Um, I like the main character. It's a guy main character. It's realistic fiction. It's going to be a very easy one for me to recommend. Um, so I'm currently reading that one. And then our next Agatha Christie is the Cittafield, Cittafield Mysteries. Um, so I don't see that one right this second. I'm sure here later I will find a copy of it for you but I will uh, be starting that, but I want to finish Twisted and I want to finish Half-Baked Murder before I start another book. Um, and the next Agatha is not for another week. I think it's next week. Um, so I want to give it a little bit of time for me to finish those other two before I start Agatha. And Agatha, I can read in three or four days. The problem is making sure I have time to read it, try and find the adaptations, take notes, listen to the All About Agatha, like there's a whole process. Um, in the last episode, I believe it was, I, I'm pretty sure it was the last one, I recommended to you um, Cosby's Razor Blade Tears. Phenomenal book. I absolutely loved it. I listened to the audio. And then after that, I saw that he actually received an Edgar Award nomination for that. Um, so I will try and put that link. I can't remember how the links work when I try and put those in the notes, but I'll try and put those in the notes. Um, but just recommending again, this is the book that I actually bought a copy and gave to my um, son's girlfriend because I'm like, look, like it was at, I think it was at the half at the um, book rack there in Murray. And again, they had a copy of, I think when I, even the copy of it was a book of the month and I'm like, look, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to give it to you. Um, and no pressure, but yes, you need to read it. Like it's so, so good. Razor Blade Tears by Cosby. And I noticed that he got an Edgar Award nomination for it. So in the last episode, I also, also talked to you about Anita Shreve's The Pilot's Wife, and I talked to you about Sea Glass, but I did not mention Stella Bain, and that's another Anita Shreve that I have read. And I already had a Goodreads review out there for it, so I don't know why I didn't include that last time. So let's chat about her for a minute. Let me find those books. Here's another copy of Murder at the Vicarage that I have. It's Agatha Christie, and it's got both Sleeping Murder and The Murder at the Vicarage. I don't know why. Um, but to me, it was still easier to take notes on that little paperback, but I do have a couple of copies, which always makes me happy because I like to have a copy that I can make the annotations. Um, and then I like to have a copy that I can put in the classroom so I can book talk it there and share it. Um, and, you know, be able to just pass them around. And anytime I see something like, you know, I've got multiple copies of it. Um, I just like to be able to share them and always have one on my shelf. So very happy to have another copy of that. Um, but speaking of Anita Shreve, um, I have not read All He Ever Wanted, but I'm pretty sure I've shown you um, that book cover before. I also have not read Strange Bits of Passion or The Weight of Water, um, but the last time I think I showed you all those covers already, and then I talked to you about The Pilot's Wife. So I don't know why I didn't talk to you about Stella Bain. It's not a favorite. I don't love it. I don't highly recommend it, whereas I highly recommend The Pilot's Wife. This was really good. For, so for you newcomers, you people who were liking the Hello Sunshine Reese's Club, you know, back in the 90s, we did Oprah's Book Club. Um, I'd say probably 90s, maybe even through the 2000s. I don't know. Um, but that was our online book club. We did it with, you know, um, while watching Oprah bring in the author and talk about it. And the pilot's wife was phenomenal. Um, but I put out a review of... Um, Stella Bain. I already had a review out there of Stella Bain, so I don't really know why I didn't talk to you about it, but I printed it off. Um, I just, I like her other books better. This one was just okay. It, this one felt like a bit fractured. I had a student who loaned it to me, and I was like, oh, it's Stella Bain by Anita Shreve. Like, can I borrow that? I'd love to read that. And then I read it, and I just, like, it took me forever to read it, um, because it just was not that interesting to me, but I don't know if it was bad timing because I felt like I read it, um, you know, just at a time when I was really busy. I feel like I can't remember what was going on, but it felt like a really busy time. 
Um, and I just, I didn't love it. So I don't highly recommend Stella Bain by Anita Shreve, but I highly recommend Pilot's Wife. And I also really liked Sea Glass. I know I've mentioned I've been reading this. It's Answers to Life Prob Life's Problems by Billy Graham. I left the $1 sticker on there because I think that is awesome. Um, I've got some post-it notes in there. I'm still reading it. I hope to wrap it up here soon, but I'm not really in a hurry on this one. Um, each chapter um, focuses on like a different question that would be written in for him to answer in the newspaper, um, a different subject. Um, and I'm enjoying it, but I'm not sure that I mentioned that I have a couple of other Billy Grahams that are on my to be read list. I have How to Be Born Again, and I have Death in, what it, Death in the Life After. Um, but earlier this summer, I read this, The Key to Personal Peace, and I was like, oh, I'll start out there because I've never really read anything by Billy Graham. And I loved it so much that then I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try some of these others. I thought they might be a little more evangelistic for me that I, a little too heavy on that side, um, but they haven't been. They've been super enjoyable. Even answers, answers to life's problems, like I'll review it for you, for you after I finish it, but um, there are some parts that are super dated in there, um, but there's enough little nuggets that I'm enjoying that I'm gonna continue reading it, and I would still then pick up these other ones. So throwing that one out there. Um, also in the last episode, I failed to mention that I picked up a copy of a uh, couple of things um, at Barnes and Noble. I did this. It's called Bella Grace Book of Lists. It's beautiful. Like I can't even tell you it's just a book of lists. I absolutely love it. I'm going to use it as inspiration in my classroom. I'm going to use it for my personal just journaling time. I love it. Um, I also bought a copy of this. It's Where Women Create. Um, and it's inspiring workspaces for extraordinary women. I have purchased this one before. Um, I want to say it's quarterly, maybe seasonal. This one is the summer 2022 issue. It's created by Joe Peckham. The um, Bella Grace is put out by Stampington. I really enjoy that one too. And again, it says display until September 29th. So probably more of a um, seasonal thing too. So have both of those. Plan to take those to the pool with me this weekend. Super enjoyed them, or I am enjoying them. I bought them with my birthday money. Oh, when I talked about Agatha Christie's Partners in Crime, I had not yet gone and watched all of the um, adaptations on BritBox. Phenomenal. I loved the adaptations. And when I say phenomenal, they're terrible television. It's slow, theatrical adaptations. Um, and the first one I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Um, but then I was drawn in the costumings. I have one word for you, hats, um, was just, it's all eye candy. And the characters in the adaptations then really grew on me. So I highly recommend them. They're on BritBox as Partners in Crime. Um, but I did not expect to actually love those adaptations as much as I did just purely for um, the banter between Tommy and Tuppence, the innuendos that I did not expect from the 1980s, uh, and the costuming. Phenomenal. Now, in the last episode, um, I told you I had read this. I need to drop it off to my um, son's girlfriend uh, who teaches elementary school. I got it to put in her classroom, but I wanted to read it first. Um, and I did, and I reviewed it and put a review out there on Goodreads. So I just wanted to make sure that you know that I did add that on Goodreads. I highly recommend it. It's The Lady Who Swallowed a Fly, but this one is seasonal. So it's the late, there was no lady who swallowed a bat. Um, and it's just super fun. And I will be passing that one on to her. I would also like to mention, I know in the past I've talked to you about Books by the Banks a lot. <laughs> like, I don't even know how many episodes I've talked to you about Books by the Banks. It's coming back. It's coming back to Cincinnati this fall. Um, it is slated to be at the Duke Energy Center November 19th. Um, that's a Saturday from 10 to 4. I cannot recommend this free, free, interactive book festival anymore. Like, I love it. <laughs> um, it is free. You go to the Duke Energy Center in downtown Cincinnati. Um, there are authors with their tables set up. Some of them are local, some of them are independent press, some of them are not. Some of them, I have talked to you about many of them. 
Um, when it comes closer, maybe, I know you're like, whatever lady, you lie to us all the time. You tell us you're going to do all these videos, but when it comes closer to time and I start seeing some of those authors that are going to be there, I'll pull some of their books. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I have not heard who their like headliner is going to be. Um, but it's been some really phenomenal people in the past. I really, really enjoy it. And I highly recommend it. Put it on your calendar. Meet me there. You know, all this um, talk about like the Pike County massacres and the court system um, has got me thinking about true crime. And I know that I've talked to you about um, Truman Capote is how I'm going to say his name, Truman Capote. I know I've talked to you about him before, but I don't see it um, in my notes. So I just want to make mention again, um, Truman Capote's The Thanksgiving Visitor. I will talk about that again in the November video, but I read it back in 2005. I put a review out there in 2020. Um, I love it. I think it's a really good one. I want to say I even read it to my class before, um, but that's a super good one. The characters that are in the story and that they are based on things in Truman Capote's own life, not necessarily nonfiction, but based on some of the relationships that he had in his own life. Um, it's a little coming of age kind of story with Thanksgiving visitor, very seasonal. And then he has another collection and I couldn't put my hands on it. I don't know where my copy is, but um, a Christmas memory, one Christmas, and then again, the Thanksgiving visitor. Um, that, I know I have a copy of that book, so when I find it, I will show it to you. But I feel like I've talked to you about him and I don't see it within my notes where it should be. Um, but put those, if you have that calendar that we've talked about going before, um, and maybe that would be a good breakout video, wouldn't it? Like in January, be like, here are the books that I've talked to you and here's when you should read them this year because they're seasonal. But um, in December, A Christmas Memory or One Christmas by Truman Capote, they're short Capote. They're short stories. They're so good. Um, they are literary. They will hit you in the feels. Super good. I highly recommend them. Um, and then he also wrote Breakfast at Tiffany's, which I can't imagine I haven't talked to you about. Um, but I put that review out there back in 2013, so it's been a long time. Um, it's a very short, sweet story of a man in New York City, um, excuse me, and um, Holly Golightly, in case you've heard that name before. Uh, she likes to breakfast at Tiffany's, uh, and they are characters. And when I say characters, I don't mean like they are characters in a story. I mean, uh, they are characters. Um, highly recommend that one too. It would be a good Christmas read, so throwing it out there. But the one that made me think about it um, is the uh, Truman Capote's true crime still novel, novelization of In Cold Blood. Um, it is so good. Um, I think it was our classic book club that read this one because it had been around for a long time, but we decided to read it and talk about it. Um, it's just a new way of telling uh, a, a nonfiction story. He did it in a journalistic manner, but it really was like reading a novel. It was so easy to read. It was about a, hor a horrific crime, um, but he really got to know the people who were accused and convicted of this murder of this family, and the way that he unravels that story to you, you're just not sure how to feel for these people who committed this horrific crime. And that is because Truman Capote also really struggled with how to deal with meeting these people who he knew had done this horrific crime, um, but he still saw them as human beings and he wanted to get that across to you. Uh, so good in cold blood by Truman Capote, as well as his other books, Thanksgiving Visitor, um, Christmas Memory, One Christmas, read anything by him. And I want to read more of him too. Um, earlier this year, I recommended to you, hmm, let me find it. Our stack is getting large again. <laughs> earlier this year, I recommended to you G.A. Malliot. It's this author, but not that book. I recommended A Fatal Winter. Um, did I listen to it? I think I listened to it on audio. I absolutely loved it. I think I came across it in, um like a bookends magazine or something I picked up from the library or an independent bookstore. Um, and I was like, Ooh, this sounds really good. And it probably even said Agatha award winning author. So somehow I saw it and I listened to, um, a fatal winter. Uh, so on my very short list is this wicked autumn that I picked up at Goodwill for two ninety nine, where it says Agatha went award winning author. Um, and it also has a little quip on the front from Louise Penny. So I don't know 
what other sign I need that this is definitely a series I need to read. A superb novel, a wonderful read. Um, so this is the first Max Tudor mystery in the series. Um, the uh, the winter one that I read, A Fatal Winter, was number two or three. So I don't know why I picked that one up. Probably because it was just like recently released. So this is on my very short list. Um, and then I also picked this up, Death at the Alma Mater by G.M. Millett. Um, and I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. I don't know where I picked this one up. But this one says, um, author of Death of a Cozy Writer. So there's another one that I need to pick up for sure by this author. And I'm not sure. It says other books by G.M. Malliott, uh, Death of a Cozy Writer, Death of the Lit Chick, and then this, this is Death at the Alma Mater. So I think this is a different series than Wicked um, Autumn. So I'm definitely going to start with Wicked Autumn because I'm a seasonal reader. And if it says autumn in it, then I'm going to read it during the autumn. How I read Fatal, actually, I think I read Fatal Winter in January. So that would be okay. Um, Under the Banner of Heaven is a new series. I shouldn't say new. It's been out there for a while. I have the book. It's by John Krakauer. Um, and I've been meaning to read it for a long time. So again, that is on my to be read list. It's nonfiction. John Krakauer's Under the Banner of Heaven. I feel like I've talked to you about some of the other um, John Krakauer books that I've read, Into the Wild and Into Thin Air. I've read both of those. So I'll make sure that I have reviews out there for those too. Okay. Um, I'm trying to clean up my list little by little. It just, everything takes time, right? And then the last thing before we get to the actual book haul um, is uh, Discovery of Witches. So Discovery of Witches I know is based on a book series that I think I've book talked a book by in a book haul somewhere um, by Catherine Hartness something like that. Um, but uh, they made a TV series off of it, Discovery of Witches. Um, I watched all of season one on Hoopla. Um, I had watched like the first season and it was one of those like clickbait things like when I turn on my smart TV and it was like, watch Discovery of Witches. And then I went to watch it and I could only watch the first episode and I really liked it and I wanted to watch more but I couldn't get more without paying for some other platform that I'm not paying for. Um, so uh, for some reason I was looking for something and I found it on Hoopla. So you can watch the first season. There are more than one season. I desperately want to watch more, but I cannot pay for one more platform. I already have Amazon Prime, Netflix, cable, um, uh, BritBox, Acorn. Are there more? I don't know. I feel like I pay for way too many. Um, so I cannot buy one more. I don't know what platform it plays on, but something I don't pay for. I don't pay for Hulu. I don't have like some, I don't have Apple TV. Um, so just highly recommending Hoopla. If your library has it, great. If not, my local library does not have Hoopla. So I got a library card through Dayton, Ohio's public library system, and I use their Hoopla. So however you can get a hold of it, Hoopla is a wonderful thing. And highly recommend Discovery of Witches Season 1. All right, I need to take these down and put the book haul books up. So I'll be right back. Okay, now this book haul might be a bit all over the place because I've done a lot of secondhand book shopping in the last month. Um, I don't know how. It's just like sometimes I'm out and then I score and then other times I'm just, I don't go anywhere for a month. So um, here you have it. Let's see what we've got. Um, so... These John Grisham books right here, um, a friend of my, a friend in my book club donated these to my classroom. So I'm putting them on here. I'll put them in the classroom and read them from there too. But I love John Grisham. He's an author that I want to go back and read everything that he's written because I read, you know, his first 15 uh, or whatever. I don't even know how many, just a ton. Uh, and then I kind of fell off the wagon, so I need to get back on. But these are his Theodore Boone series. Um, and we have The Accused and The Abduction. Uh, I think I would really enjoy them. I think my students would really enjoy them. So I want to get one of these read pretty quickly. Um, but I will be talking to my kids about um, him, not this week, but he's slated to be on the, um, the docket for my daily recommendations the following week. This 
Um, maybe you should talk to someone. Lori Gottlieb, a therapist, her therapist in our lives revealed nonfiction. Um, I picked that up. I think I picked it up at a, a free little library in Florida. Yes, I must have because someone left their receipt. Um, they bought this at the Sarasota International Airport and they also bought a root beer. So <laughs> there is that. Um, so throwing that one in there, picked it up at a free little library down there in Florida. It looks like nonfiction. It's on my to be read list. Well, looky there. I don't know why I didn't talk about these whenever I was telling you about Truman Capote. Here is a copy of In Cold Blood. Um, and actually I picked up another copy of that um, at Goodwill for $2.99. So I'll be putting that in the classroom. I'll be book talking those in the next little bit. Um, and then here's a copy of Breakfast at Tiffany's. So um, again, let's see what our little placeholder is. Times squared 69, techno dancing days in 69 days in Times Square. Interesting little place card there. I'm always interested in what people leave in the books. Um, but I picked those up somewhere here in the last month. Um, so I at least get to, so I'm excited that I have a copy of In Cold Blood to put in the classroom because it's a great true crime for those people. I also, at um, one of those Florida free little libraries, picked up this. Um, the Mystery of Miss Christie. Uh, it has a little $2 sticker on it, but I have down that I actually bought this, or I actually picked it up at one of the free libraries, so I don't know. Um, but this is definitely one that's been on my to-be-read list. I want to read anything Agatha this year, whether it's a book by Agatha or about Agatha. And this is one of those new modern books. It's by Marie Benedict, which I have read um, something by her. The Personal Librarian, wasn't that her? Um, I think I read that this year with their book club, so... This is on my list to be read this year during my All About Agatha. I'm not gonna be done with <laughs> Agatha this year. It's gonna take us probably a couple of years to read all of her books and talk about them, but I was glad to pick that one up. I'm super excited to read that too. So I went to this really cool bookstore this summer, August 1st, I believe, when I took my parents to the um, Carillon Park in Dayton, Ohio. Um, there was a place called Dayton Dollar Date, date and dollar, I think that's what it's called. Um, and it is this really weird used bookstore. It's kind of in a warehouse and there are so many books it's overwhelming. Um, but I went looking for Agatha and I found some good ones. I really did find some good ones. Um, I found some good ones for my classroom and then I just found some good ones for me too. Um, that is where I got this, which is, uh, Bird just came on the bird feeder. Um, which is The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants by Amber Shears. So I was happy to pick that one up. If I've not um, reviewed that for you, then I will add that to my review list before I take it in. I read that back in 2002, and then I continued reading the series. I picked up a couple of copies of Lillian Jackson Braun's books. Okay, I say a couple, I only see one. It uh, looks like I picked up a copy of Lily Jack Lillian Jackson Braun's um, the Cat Who Saw Stars. So I've read that whole series, but I don't have a copy of all those books. So I picked up a copy of that for my shelves. Now, when I say dollar, Dayton Dollar Bookstore, I think all the books used to be a dollar, but maybe they were a dollar fifty with inflation and the way things are going right now. Perfectly fine. Seriously, a dollar fifty, I think I can handle it. Um, I did finally. I think I've been talking to you about this. I did finally get a copy of The Da Vinci Code. Um, and I also got a copy of Angels and Demons. So I've already read both of these, but I, I've been wanting to have a copy um, here at my house and I haven't had those. I love Dan Brown. I read all of his books. I've read both of these. Um, I still own one or two books of his that I haven't read that are on my, you know, to be read list. So I was happy to add these to the shelf. Pretty sure I've talked to you about these whenever I read I was looking to see I don't think I've read a Dan Brown yet this year but I did last year and I'm pretty sure I reviewed all of his books that I had read when I did that but if not I'll catch you up on them yeah last year I read the Inferno and I think that's when I talked to you about that Dan Brown I've also read the lost symbol um, and then some of those books like breaking the da Vinci code where there are books about his books I read those because I think they're super interesting I picked up a copy of Meg Cabot's Teen Idol for the classroom. I have a copy here already. Um, and I'm gonna do a breakout video. Yes, I know, stop calling me a liar. I'm doing the best I can. Um, but I'm gonna do a breakout video with Meg Cabot's books because she is an author that I've read a ton of her books. Um, and I think that you would like to hear about those. 
but they, I have to go into some detail. So I'll do that one later, but I picked up one of those for the classroom. I picked up a copy of Blood Work by Michael Conley. Um, remember, I've talked to you about Michael Conley before because he's the guy who writes Bosch, which my husband and I watched that series. We're now watching Bosch Legacy. We don't love it as, actually, yeah, we don't love it as much as Bosch, but actually we finished it. Um, so we're at the end of series one on that one, Bosch Legacy. Um, but I love Blood Work. I've already talked to you about it. I'm pretty sure. If not, I will need to do that. I also have a number of my Michael Conley books that I want to read still. I own those and I've talked to you about those. A Darkness, More Than Night, Echo Park, The Lincoln Lawyer, The Poet. I've talked to you about those. Um, I picked up several copies. I've been looking for this one forever. It's Tourist Season by Carl Hyacin. Um, it has to do with a professional fishing um, group or competition. So I thought that would be really fun. Um, so I finally got a copy of that. So I probably won't read it until next summer or maybe I'll take it on one of these trips when I'm going to follow my husband or my son on one of these fishing trips. Um, so I plan on reading that one. That's um, more of a short list book because like I said, it's so relevant. But I picked up um, a couple of other copies of his books. I have Star, I, I think I already had Star Island, but I think I picked up Skin Tight there. Um, so adding those also to my list. And then I've already read this book. I'm not sure if I talked to you about it, so I might have to add it, but Hope Never Dies. I picked this up. Um, uh, did I pick this up at? I picked this up there. I already have a copy. I probably won't put it in the classroom. It is a bit too political, um, but this is one that I'll put in a free little library. I'll put it in my trunk and carry it around and swap it out or give it to someone that might want to read it because it's so good I couldn't pass it up. I love this book. Um, the author was at Books by the Banks, and I bought the book off of him um, and read it years ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's very fun. It's even funner now that Joe Biden is now our president, and in the book, he's a character, and boy, is he a character. Really enjoyed it, so um, that one I'll be able to pass around. I got a copy of Rotten Ruin by Mayberry. Um, I think I have a copy of this at home and at school, so I'll probably just add it to my school shelf. Um, I picked up a copy of Death by Tea by Alex Erickson. Uh, I've already read this, but I didn't have a copy of it, so that was nice. Pretty sure I've already talked to you about that one too, but I'll make sure on any of my book haul books, before they go on the shelf, I review them for you. Um, Holiday Grind by Cleo Coyle. Uh, this is one I don't think I've gotten to yet. It's on my to be read list. Pretty sure, but I didn't have a copy of it. And then this one was in a free little library. It is, what's the name? Leslie Meyer, Eggnog Murder. So adding that to my Christmas stack. Um, again, seasonal reading, gotta love it. Our church did another little study on the book of Psalms. So I have this little pamphlet. I love that they do these little, they call them guidebooks um, so that you can take notes and it has some of the main points or scriptures in them. I love them. Um, let's see. Some of those, like the coffee, the coffee house one looks like came from the Levin and Goodwill. Okay, <laughs> those are the books I've read since the last time I talked to you, plus the book haul books. Um, I'm gonna set aside like that whole thing of Meg Cabot. I caught up on those reviews, so I've recently added those, but I'm not going to take the time to talk to you about those today. Um, let's talk a little bit about book news and then try and cut this baby down to maybe an hour and a half, because right now I'm at probably about three hours worth of film. We'll see what I need to tell you about. I don't know that I have reviewed for you Nickel and Dimed by Barbara Erich, I think is her name, but she passed away earlier this month. So I'll see if I can find a copy of that book. I loved it. It was a great read. I want to say we read it for book club, but I might have just read that one on my own. It's nonfiction. Um, so I'll pull that book and review it for you. Um, Anthony Horowitz, who I've talked to you about before, he is actually turning Magpie Murders into a movie on PBS uh, Masterpiece. Super excited about that. I loved Magpie Murders. I've talked to you about it. I'm pretty sure I talked to you about Riley Sager's Home Before Dark. That is also being turned into a movie. Told you about Under the Banner of Heaven that's on Hulu. Pretty sure I've talked to you about Dennis Lehane before. He was one of the headliners at Books by the Banks. 
And um, he has a new TV series out called Blackbird. If you follow me on social media, I posted the top 10 most recommended fiction audiobooks of all time. I also forwarded a post by Book Riot that talked about Christmas murder mystery books. Um, so I'd like to do a whole segment on that at Christmas too. Not just holiday books, but those. Um, I shared an article about the 11 young adult books that TikTok loves. TikTok, book talk is a phenomenon. Um, so I hope you're following along one of my students today. I have several students this year and last year who really like mafia romance, which I don't even know what that is. So I started looking into it and then another girl came up and was talking to me about it today. And I said, you know, I just, I don't know that I can find those books. Like I need some help there. And she said, go to TikTok, type in mafia romance books it'll come up to you. I'm like, I don't know. When I go to TikTok, I follow the people I'm following. I click on videos other people have sent me. It didn't occur to me to actually search for something on TikTok. So I'm going to be doing that this weekend. Um, I forwarded an article about cozy mysteries set in cities that I thought was super good. I'm not sure if I've talked to you about A Gentleman in Moscow, but they're turning that into a movie with Ewan McGregor. Super excited about that. Um, I started watching the series Dark Winds um, and then realized that it was set on a Tony Hillerman and R.R. R. Martin um, book series. So throwing that out there, I started watching it. It was on Spectrum On Demand. Super good. Very creepy. I watched the movie Darkest Minds on Spectrum On Demand. It's a young adult novel. I can't remember who it's about. It was terrible. <laughs> I just told my students that Sharon Draper's Out of My Mind is being turned into a movie, so I'll look and see if I've reviewed that for you. I'm stopping there. I really do want to try and get these videos under control um, so that they're not quite so long for you. I would like to keep them like an hour or under. I doubt that I'm going to get this one down to an hour, but I'm working on it. Um, I only cover the new books that I've read since the last time I talked to you. Um, and then my book haul, and then some book news. So I'm trying to shave it down, and then those things like, I'm gonna do all of the Meg Cabot books that I've read on reviews, like take that out into a separate video. So I wanna get this one out to you. Um, I wanna give you a lot of good recommendations here, books that I've recently read that I would highly recommend, the Agathas, that sort of thing. I really appreciate you spending your evening with me or whenever you're watching this, this was my Friday evening. There's so many books that I could recommend to you. Um, and I've recommended so many so far over these years that I hope you are finding ones that you are interested in for your to be read list. And I would love to hear what you think. I am super happy to be your friendly librarian. I appreciate you giving the time giving me the opportunity to be your librarian. Remember that almost all the books that I review on my YouTubes, you can purchase them. I have thrifted most of them, um, but you can also get them from your public library on Libby as eBooks, audiobooks, or go to your public library and request them in print. You can do that too. Hit the subscribe and like button so that I know that you're following along. Let me know, is there something you're looking for? Something that you would like to tell me about? I'm happy to hear any recommendations that you may have or comments on the books that I've shared with you. And as always, I've really enjoyed spending my evening with you. Keep in touch, folks. Enjoy.